Hi, Jewish mom. Welcome back. It's been a few a few weeks uh, since I made a pep talk because of Pesach. Um, I hope all of you had a wonderful Pesach. Um, I personally am, am still recovering from Pesach. Um, uh, Pesach ended, it's now Sunday, um, and Pesach ended a few days ago. It's been less than a week. And I'm still like kind of recovering um, physically and even emotionally from kind of like the exhausting, very demanding um, Pesach that I had it was very wonderful in many ways and also very demanding and tiring. Um, and um, so um, that's the background for the story that I want to tell you, um, which happened to me this past Shabbat. We spent this Shabbat uh, with the family um, that we're very that we're very close to and that we have a great deal of respect for. Um, and um, uh, so I spent some time talking with the mother, with the rabbinate in this family. Um, and uh, so, um, so we were so on Shabbat afternoon. We were sitting down and talking. Um, and I guess in kind of the background of uh, of you know Pesach and feeling kind of worn out, um, I was a little bit whining about um, <laughs> about about the fact that I'm 45 years old. I'm the age at which this woman became a grandmother, um, and I have a two year old to run around after. And you know, if you saw my two year old, he is beyond adorable. He's very, 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 he's so cute, but he's also really a shovav that used to say in Hebrew. He's like a, a rambunctious kid. Um, and um, so, um, so, I so I have my work set out for me uh, with Yonatan, with my two-year-old. Um, so I was a little bit talking about that. I was saying, you know, I'm, a, I'm the age of a grandmother and I'm sitting in the park in the playground, you know, with like 25-year-olds and running around after a two-year-old. So, um, so the rabbinite I was sitting with, she told me a personal story. And um, this is someone I've known for many, many years. Um, so it's story, stories I've kind of heard bits and pieces of, but she kind of put it all together. Um, she told me that, um, so, uh, so she is a mother of Leah and Harath, eight children. Um, and she had a very complicated gynecological history. She told me at one point that the doctor said that she is a living textbook of all the things that can possibly go wrong gynecologically or during one's obstetric history. Um, and uh, so unfortunately, she had a very, diff every pregnancy was difficult. She had um, very difficult births. And, um, uh, and, um, and at the age of 36, um, a doctor told after she had, she'd had several, she had her last child at 36. And after that, she, she, she started miscarrying and miscarrying again and again. And, the, and her doctor said, no more. You're done. You have eight kids. You're 36. You're done. Um, and so this rabbini told me, she told me how heartbroken she was at the age of 36 to not be able to have any more children. And, um, and she, said, she, she, said, she said about herself, she said, I am not a jealous person. She said, I struggle with other things in life. But I, I don't struggle with jealousy. That's not that's not a meta that I struggle with. She said, but those those ten years between the ages of thirty six and forty six, any time I would see a mother pregnant, any time I'd see a mother with a new baby, it would hurt me. I would I would feel jealous. I would feel such jealousy that another person could be having a baby and it wasn't me. Um and um so. So she told me, so, uh, so then, then she said to me, she said to me about my two-year-old. She said, she said, you have this two-year-old. She said, it's wonderful. You're 45 years old and you have this wonderful two-year-old and he's so cute. And, um, and, and I said, I said, it's a luxury, right? It's a luxury at the age of 45 to be able to still be doing this, you know, to take, have a two, have a very adorable two-year-old also, have a two-year-old and to take him to Ghan and bring him home from Ghan and to now be potty training him and all, be going through again, all these, all these stages that I've gone through with all my eight children. Um, and she said, yes, the luxus, this is a luxury. It's a luxury to have, to be able to do this again. Um, so afterwards, um, on the way home <clears throat> from, uh, from this family, I was reading, um, I was reading an Ami magazine. Um, last week's Ami magazine, uh, I'm sorry, Ami Living, was a very nice, um, very nice article there by Sarah Shapiro, who's one of my favorite writers. 
Um, so Sarah Shapiro, she wrote an article um, called Coming Closer, Women Talk About Getting Older. Um, and as someone who's getting older, I guess we're all getting older, um, and some of us more than others, me. Um, so I, I read this with a lot of interest. Um, and, and, she, and so Sarah Shapiro, so basically she interviews a bunch of women, women let's say, she interviews, interviews women about how they feel about growing old. Um, and she tells this amazing story. I'm sorry, so one of the people she interviews is Rebetzin Sipora Heller. And Rebetzin Heller tells the following story. She, ha she says, My mechatanister, mechatanister, mechatanister means, um, means the mother of her, of Rebetzin Heller's daughter or son in law. Um, My mechatanister, Miriam Sukkot, used to live in a downstairs apartment where the view outside her kitchen window was of a pedestrian bridge. So all day long, as she cooked and did dishes, she saw feet. When the children grew up and got married, they moved to another apartment on a high floor. So now she sees the sky. That's very much what aging is about. Um, so, um, so this really struck me, this, this idea that when we're that when we're down in it, when we're down in you know in the mothering trenches, um, then really we see the feet, we see the hard work, we see you know the cooking and the cleaning and the dealing with the tantrums and dealing with just with various behavioral things and disciplining and getting kids to bed and getting them to school and and um, and we're we're looking at the feet like we just see the down, we just see the reality of what is. You know, we get very stuck down in our trenches, in our mothering trenches. And as, we, as a person gets older and even becomes elderly, then they can see the big picture of what they've done, of what they've accomplished. And that was how I felt speaking with this Rabbanit that I spoke with on Shabbat, um, that I felt like, I felt like she's, she's nearing 60. I um, mean, at this point, Baruch Hashem, she's been blessed with many, many, most of her children are married. She's been blessed with many, many grandchildren. Um, and she sees, and also she's had a successful career, um, but she sees the blessing that each child is. You know, she looks back and sees these young mothers. You know, I guess, I guess, I guess me included. I'm, I'm not a young mother, but I'm a mother of young children. And she remembers what a blessing that was. What a blessing that was to be able to uh, to be able to take this child to Ghana and take the child home from Ghana and take care of them and be with them and 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 and, and watch them grow up, um, and um, so I was just thinking, you know, in conclusion, um, how important it is it is for us at whatever stage we are in our mothering lives. I know that as I grow older and as especially as I have older children, you know, my my oldest daughter is turning twenty next year. Um, she's big. She's a big. She's a she's a woman, a young woman, you know, um, and uh, and it just gives me it gives me a whole new perspective about my little kids. It gives me a whole new perspective about wow, like what they're going to be growing up into. It gives me a whole new perspective of where we're headed here. You know, even though I am in the mothering trenches, um, I'm I'm able much easier. Um, especially when I'm not burnt out from Pesach, <laughs> I'm able much easier to see beyond the feet on the pedestrian bridge, to see beyond that. I'm able to see much more the sky, to see the big picture, to see beyond the, beyond the little, beyond like the physical work and the demands and the tiredness and the, uh, you know, I'm able to see, I'm able, I'm able to see, and I want to bless all of us, um, that we should be able more and more to see beyond, to see beyond the feet to the sky. I want to bless all of you just with an amazing day.